All right, this is problem number 123 from your text, um, section 6.1. It's a story problem, so you can read up on that to be familiar with it. So basically, we have $3,000. We're going to um, uh, have loans. We have two loans that add up to $3,000. Let me put that put it that way. And then we have interest from these loans. That's a certain amount and, a, and an interest rate from each loan and then we want to find out how much uh, each loan is worth. And again, you can read this in your text to become familiar with it. So um, the first thing we want to do because we have two loans is we're going to let let x equal the loan amount at uh, the 8%. So it might be from a bank, it might be a lending institution. Um, but it's the loan that's 8%. Um, so we'll call that x. And then we'll let y equal the loan amount at 10%. Okay, And uh, we want to make two equations. This is a systems problem. We're going to make two equations. We've taken out two loans. So our first loan is with one of the institutions that charges 8%. And our second loan is with another institution that charges 10%. And when we add the two loan amounts together, we know it totals $3,000. Okay. The second equation that we're going to make has to do with the interest rate. So for loan x, the interest rate is 0.08 um, in decimal form. And for loan y, the interest rate is 0.1 in decimal form. And both of the interests from this account add up to $264. Okay. Now we have a system of equations we want to solve. You know about solving by substitution. You know about solving by elimination. This one we're going to solve by graphing. Graphing works really, really well for story problems, especially when we start getting some large numbers and decimals and all sorts of great things like that. So in order to graph these, you have to, of course, put them into y equals. So let's change this one to y equals. We do that by subtracting x from both sides. So this one is y equals 3,000 minus x. And I'm just going to call that y sub 1, because that's my first one. And then let's change the second one into y equals. And I'm going to do that by first subtracting 0.08x from each side. So then I've got 0.1y equals 264 minus 0.08x. And now I want to divide each term, or the whole side, by 0.1. But watch how I can write it, since I'm going to graph it anyway. So I could write this as this whole quantity, 264 minus 0.08x, divided by 0.1. No need to divide that out. You're just going to type that right in the calculator. So we're going to type these in the calculator. We're going to look for the intersection. And that's going to give us our x and our y. So here's the graphing calculator. And I've already typed these in for you. So you can see y sub 1 is 3,000 minus x. y sub 2 is 264 minus 0.08x. That whole quantity, whoops, it looks like I forgot to do a division sign there. So let's add the division sign there. There we go, divided by 0.1. Does that look better? OK, divided by 0.1. All right, now here's kind of a cool way to find your window. Because uh, the number one thing students struggle with more than anything is finding a window. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to second window. This is our table start. We're going to start at 0. We're going to go down to change table, and we're going to scroll in 100s. Okay. Now let's go look at our table. Second graph takes us to table. Now, when I look right here at 0, do you see how your y sub 1 is greater than your y sub 2? So what you're going to do is you're going to scroll through your x's, and you're going to find where the y sub 2 then becomes greater than the y sub 1. OK, so here I am down here, 1100. My y sub 1 is still greater, so keep going. Keep going, keep going. 
Now, you can already see by scrolling by one hundredths how much quicker this is going. If you were scrolling by ones, you'd be here forever. If you were scrolling by tens, you'd be here forever. So let's just keep going a little bit. 1700, 1800. Ooh, looks like they're equal there. All right, so let's go ahead and, um, because I'm demonstrating the technique, um, what you want to do is you want to take where they're equal or approximately equal, and you want to put that in the middle of your screen here. So do you see up here at the top where x is 1,500? See my y sub 1 is greater than my y sub 2? But look down here at the bottom of my screen where x is 2,100. Now my y sub 2 is greater than my y sub 1. So when I do this, I know somewhere in between is my intersection. And I know it's popping up right there, but let's just kind of pretend a minute it doesn't pop up there because I'm going to show you how to find it. So now we're going to set our window, and we're going to make our window go from 1500 to 2100 in the x direction. So let's do that a minute. So window 1500 to 2100. And now let's go back and look at our y's a minute. Okay, so see, just recap a minute. My x, my smallest x was 1500. My biggest x was 2100. Because somewhere in between there, these two lines are going to intersect. Let's do the same thing with the y's, but the y's are in reverse here um, for this particular problem. So 900 is my smallest y, 1500 is my biggest y. So let's go back to window and let's set that accordingly. So y min, I think I said was 900. And then I think y max, I said was 1500. OK. And now we should be able to look at our graph. Oh my gosh, how beautiful is that? So if if you did it, this technique right, you'll see your intersection is right smack and dab of your screen. And so now you can find it with second trace. Go down to intersect, enter, and enter, and enter, and oh, I must have picked the wrong one. Crazy cursor. Intersect. OK, I probably picked the derivative. Different course, different day. There we go. Alrighty, there's my x and there's my y. So let's go back and finish our problem. So let's see, what was our solution? x was, I believe, 1800, and that's dollars. And y, I believe, was 1200, and that is also dollars. So you can uh, check them if you'd like to make sure they satisfy your equation. 1800 plus 1200 is indeed 3000. And then if you insert it in here for x and insert it in here for y, it, you'll find it satisfies that equation. So that's problem number 123 from section 6.1.